Good morning. This morning I'm going to make a video about how to start beekeeping. The first thing I did was clean up here a little bit. This little garden is kind of like something special I made for myself. And it gets ahead of me now and then, but you know, these flowers died out already, but these are starting up, so they're all blooming. There's a columbine. And uh, yeah, a couple other things here. Got my little orchid still blooming. That thing's been blooming for about a year, I think. Wow. Anyway, today we're going to talk about how to start beekeeping and what it takes. This is the time of year we want to start thinking about it. If you're thinking about getting a beehive for a little bit of honey, that's what I started with. I just wanted a little bit of honey. So if you've been thinking about getting a little bit of honey, maybe this video is for you. We're going to cover a lot of territory this morning, so let's see how it goes. Good morning, Charlie. How are you? Are you going to help in the video today? Off. Don't jump up on me. You get me all dirty. I don't want to dirty pants. Not this early in the morning. You're leaving footprints all over. That's okay, though. Just cleaning up here, folks. Getting ready to make a little video for you. All about beginning beekeeping. What you need to know now. Because the season's about to start. I think Bob Benny says it starts in August. <laughs> well, we'll go with that. But uh, this is June. Well, first thing I want to do is put a little water in my bee bath here. It's just a shallow tray dish. And it's got a few rocks in here, just gravel. So the bees won't drown in it. They have a place to sit and drink their water. And I guarantee you, they'll be here doing that as this hot weather comes on in June, July, August, September. Yes, sir. You'll see thousands of them. Now I like to make these films early in the morning because, as you can hear, perhaps in the background, there's an airplane flying by. It won't be long. People be getting their chainsaws out, their lawn mowers, and weed whackers, and you know. Gets pretty noisy pretty soon. These bees need water, so I put them in this little shallow tray. I filmed some of these last year, but every year is a little different, so I'll be making some more films on this. Let's get started on what you need to do to start beekeeping in 2025. The first thing you're going to need is a good foundation. So, yes. Charlie wants to get into the act. He's part of our foundation around here. <laughs> Don't jump on me, Charlie. You'll get me all dirty before I make all this film. Let's go get it. Well, I've already dug out a little spot here to put my foundation in. Because I've done this two or three times. So, first I start off with a couple blocks. These can be solid blocks like these, or regular 8 by 16 uh, blocks that they use to build a house. I forget what they call them. Stretchers, I think it is. Yeah. Anyway, let me get a couple boards put across here. I just happen to have them set here where I've used them before. So this will be our foundation. I'm already getting out of breath. Beekeeping is hard work and this is just the beginning. It's really hard work actually. Especially when you're 80 years old. But I'm not quite there yet. Almost. But not quite. Are you checking it out Charlie? Okay, Charlie says it's okay. So, let's go get the beehive. So we start with the bottom board. How you doing Charlie? Are you sniffing out my tripod? This is bottom board. It's got a three quarter inch opening here on this side and on this side a three eighths inch. Now the three eighths inch is for bee space. 
But generally, as a starter, as a beginner, we start with this right here, the three quarter side. We'll talk about beast space in another time. But just for now, three eighths of an inch is about the space that the bee will go through and not make honeycomb. He has enough, or she has enough, and she has enough room to do that. If you don't have, if you have space that's wider than that, Charlie's eating my plant over there. What are you doing? If you have space that's wider than that, then the, bee'll, then the bees will be, then the bees will eat comb. Then the, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> if you got a space wider than that, then the bees will make comb there. So you don't want that comb in between your frames because that makes it hard to get your frames out. But anyway, let's go back to the bottom board. I've got two of them here. One is a screen bottom board, which can be used for extra ventilation and also for checking for mites. Now I bought this here so I could demonstrate it. I don't use this, and a lot of people do, a lot of people don't. But there are advantages. For one, when you do a mite test, the mites will drop down to the bottom board and you can count how many you got. In fact, there's a bottom board here, this little thing here, can be replaced with one that has a grid on it, so you can count how many is in the grid. But for my purposes, I just wanted to show you how this works. So that's only got one side that's three quarter inch. So that's what you would need with this. Next we'll have a deep brood chamber. Let me get that. Now this bottom board cost me $25, whereas this one here I think was about $22 when I got it a couple years ago. And it's probably about the same price right now. It depends on where you buy it. Keep in mind, the prices also add 10%. And if you add 10% to the Lord, that's 20% right off the top there. So, yeah, it can get expensive. So right here, we've got, like I said, about $22. If you get this set up, you start with that. 22 bucks plus tax plus the Lord, if you do that. Not everybody does that. So this is your brood chamber. That goes on like that, and the bottom this is called a deep super, or a brood chamber, a deep brood chamber. So this is what holds your frames for your bees to make comb in. So let's go to the next step. Oh, one thing. This generally comes in a 10 frame or an 8 frame, and we're talking about Langstroth hives. And that's another video I've got that I'll put up sometime. This is the 10 frame hive here, 10 frame hive body, or a 10 frame brood chamber. So let me get some frames. Now these are frames. This is honeycomb frame. This is a Langstroth frame. It's a, got a plastic insert the bees can make their honey on. It's already got the six sided starter cells. So you're going to put 10 of them in here, unless you put a feeder in there, and that'll be a little, a little bit later. But these frames, like I said, just come as beginning, and they're wax coated. If you've not got enough wax on it, the bees won't work on it. A lot of beekeepers coat this with melted wax using a foam roller. That encourages the bees to use this plastic foundation. What I buy is double coated, and I've generally had pretty good luck without having to do that. But not everybody does, and I do occasionally have some wonky comb that the bees make in between because they don't like it. But most of the time, 99% of the time for me, the comb I buy, the foundation I buy that is, the bees will work and they'll fill it out properly. Now this is drawn comb. On that plastic comb foundation, the bees draw out cells. So it can be for honey or it can be for brood. Either one. So that goes in there too. If you've got that, then you're going to be way ahead of the game if you've got drawn comb. That's usually somebody that's already got some experience in beekeeping and has had several hives and they can use that comb again or extracted it from got honey out of it or whatever. 
comb can be used again and again. It just saves a lot of time, a lot of energy for the bees because they don't have to build it over and over again. Now for my purposes here, I'm just demonstrating this so I don't have the extra combs in here yet, but the next thing I'm going to need is a cover. There are two types of covers. This one is an inner cover. It's got a slot up here for ventilation. You can put that up like that. In the summertime, the moisture and air will come up here and go out that slot. In the wintertime, you turn it over like this, and it keeps the front of the hive where the airflow is just goes out here and out the front rather than going back through where the bees are clustered. On top of this, we have an outer cover. So I went and got an outer cover for demonstration purposes, which put it on right like that. Whoa, wait, it's still summertime. My inner cover is upside down. So we put it back this way. Remember the opening be to, to the front, generally speaking. Some people do it differently. Everything I'm telling you here is how I do it. Not necessarily how everybody else does it. And your location makes a lot of difference in how you do it. But I'm in Western North Carolina in Blue Ridge Mountains, and this works for me. So here's my cover. The cover goes over like this. They, tell it, they call it a telescoping cover because you lift it up here and it telescopes over the inner cover. Now when you do this, I usually pull it back a little bit to make sure that inner cover's back where it should be and then push it forward to make sure the opening is open. So there you have it. That'd be a complete hive. There is one more thing though. This is a frame feeder. It goes in and replaces a couple frames in your beehive. So it go like this. Usually on the edge, like that. You put sugar water in here. Usually a one-to-one -one mix. Part, one part of water and one part of sugar. And that's another story because some people do it a little differently. But this is what generally happens. People use half and half. So it goes in like that and replaces the frame. So now you're only going to have eight frames in here. Or nine, depending on what size the feeder is. There's other feeders that go on the beehive that can be used, like pail feeders that go on top. But that's another story we'll talk about another day. So this goes back on here like that. And this goes here. Now you've been wondering maybe, how much is it going to cost me? That was my big question. I just wanted a little bit of honey when I started. So I went down and I said, how much is this going to cost me? How much does a beehive cost? They told me, oh, about $22 for the bottom board and $24 for the hive body, $24 for the hive body, and uh, $20 for the inner cover, and another $25 for the outer cover. Well, that price has gone up considerable since seven years ago. I think you're going to be looking at about Oh, $250 minimum just to get that part of it done. Now keep in mind, they're going to recommend that you they're going to recommend that you get two hives, two colonies of bees. So that makes it double, at least 500. But in reality, when we get done here for those two hives with the bees, you're going to be talking about $1,000 each. Now. Say, what, 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 wait, that was only $250, that $300, say? Well, the thing is, there's other things you need. You need tools, you need a place to put the bees, you need to have, like I said, the foundation, and you have to have the bees. Now let me go get a box that the bees are going to be in. So this is what we call a nuke. A nuke is five frames of bees on maybe two frames of brood. You have a queen three or four pounds of bees, one frame of honey, and one frame of foundation. This one's empty, but that's what you would get. 
but you need two. So this one here I bought, I think it was $195. In conclusion, you'll need two nuke boxes, two hive bodies, complete beehives rather, two complete beehives, a foundation, and then there's other things that get involved, like your hive tool, your smoker, your electric fence, all these things we'll talk about in other videos, I'm sure two or three times, probably. <laughs> if you like this, if you've enjoyed this, please do subscribe. It helps me a lot and gets me to make a lot more videos. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.